Hello. Uh, we will now discuss the reciprocal function. It is one of the parent functions, very important to us. So reciprocal function is written as fx equals to 1 over x. Reciprocal is just the reverse, x, 1 over x. So 1 over x is reciprocal of x. Now, to start with, let's consider the critical points which we should use to draw this function or sketch a graph of this function. So here is a table and we'll just fill up this table with x values which is the domain of the function and fx values which forms the range of the function. So fx is 1 over x and domain is x. 0 is the most critical point here. Does 1 over 0 make any sense? You can't divide by 0, right? So it does not really give you any value. This does not exist. So 0 cannot be a part of our domain. On a graph, we can show this as a whole, like this. So the 0 is not a part of our domain. Okay, now let's consider other values. Let's take some positive values first. So if you take positive value, let's say 1, then 1 over 1 is 1. You get 1. If you take 2, then 1 over 2 is half. How about half? If we take half, then reciprocal of half is 2. So these are good positive values to take. You will see that reciprocal of a positive number is always positive. Correct? Now let's take some negative numbers. Okay? Let's take negative 2. Now, what is reciprocal of negative 2? 1 over 2 with a negative sign. Reciprocal of a negative number is always negative. Correct? Negative 1. Negative 1 over 1 over negative 1 is negative 1 itself. Correct? And how about negative half? Reciprocal of negative half will be negative 2. So, these are good points to take close to origin. You will see that the value act actually close to origin changes very slowly and we can have a very smooth curve there. As we go very high values, now let's take, let's say value 100. Now what will happen? 1 over 100 is like very, very small, right? Very, very small. So we can consider now a very large value, large positive value. So that we are considering as end behavior of our function. So if we say large positive value, normally we say infinity, right? Kind of. This infinity is, we can never reach there, but we can say we approach infinity. When we do so, then 1 over infinity will be kind of approaching 0. So we say we approach 0. So when we are approaching a very large value, then we approach 0. Now, if this large value is negative, if we approach infinity, very large value, negative, then we are on the negative side. So, we again approach 0. 0, as you know, does not have a sign. But, well, we can make a difference here. That when we are approaching infinity from positive side, we approach from positive side. 0 from positive side. This does not mean that I am saying 0 has positive sign. No. 0, we take neutral. Now, minus, we are approaching, that means, before 0, there was a number, very large number, let's say, whatever. Then, it will be approaching, but from a negative side of the graph. Well, this point will be clear when I plot some points on the graph. Now, let's plot these points, okay? Let's start with 0 again. 0 does not exist. So we made a hole for this particular thing. Correct? Now, at a value of half, the y value is 2. So this is, every unit is 1 here. Okay? I'm not writing 1 everywhere. It may just mess it for the time being. So we'll just see. Half, half x value and the y value is 2. 1, 2. So we get this point here. Correct? Next point is 1 and we get 1. We get 1 here. Then, at 2 half, 1, 2, we get 2. 
You also saw, as we go higher and higher, we approach this line. Do you see that? So we can draw these dots saying higher and higher, but we will never touch x-axis, correct? As we approach to plus infinity, we approach x-axis, the zero value, okay? Now, on this side also, if we go closer and closer to zero, that is, we go to 1 over 3, 1 over 10, then the reciprocal will be, for 1 over 3, kind of 3, right? For 1 over 10, maybe very, very close, and 0 0.01, right? So, you will see that you approach y-axis. You are approaching y-axis from positive side. This is going towards positive infinity. Do you see? Positive infinity. You have seen already, reciprocal of a positive number is always positive, right? Similarly, we will draw graphs, plot the points on this graph for the negative values. So for minus 2, we have half. Minus 2, the value is half. Minus 1, it is minus 1. For minus half, it is 2. And if you go closer from the negative side, you have seen the values will be much, much larger, right? And more and more negative. So this can be shown with these dots. Now, here, if our values are higher, negative, let's say 3, then it will be 1 over 3, 4, 1 over 4, 5, 1 over 5, 6, 1 over 6. And if we go even further, then we will approach this x-axis from the negative side. Negative of a number, if we reciprocal it, it will be negative. Okay? That's how the graph is going to look. You can join these points to make a smooth curve which will look like our reciprocal function. Is it okay? Like this. So this represents our reciprocal function. Arrows indicate they will go forever in this direction. Okay. Now here, we have used a term that as we approach a value of x, the function approaches 0. Okay. This is a basic definition and now I will introduce you to the word asymptote. So what is an asymptote? Asymptote, a line that a graph of a function gets closer and closer to, but never meets. Do you see that? So we are approaching this line. Which is this line? This line is y equals to 0, the x-axis. And it is a horizontal line. So for this particular line, we call it a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Now, this also gives us the end behavior, correct? The end behavior is, as x approaches infinity, y approaches 0. And we see that 0 is being approached from the positive side. So, I am just writing positive. Now, let's see this side. Here also, as x approaches negative infinity, because this is the negative side of x-axis, y approaches Again, 0, but from the negative side, do you see? And both are approaching a particular line, in this case, x-axis, which can be represented by y equals to 0. Therefore, we say y equals to 0 is our horizontal asymptote. Okay? Now, now we will look at, there is another asymptote here. You see, if you are approaching 0, then again you approach another line. You see, and this time this line is y-axis. Correct? So this is called vertical asymptote. So as x approaches, I will write like this now. Let me put this in blue. As x approaches 0, from positive side, what happens to y? y approaches infinity and positive infinity. Do you see that? Positive side. On this side, 
when we are approaching from the negative side so what happens so as x approaches 0 from negative side right this is negative side right y approaches negative infinity do you see so what is the equation of a vertical asymptote the x axis okay so at x axis which value is 0 always x is 0 therefore the vertical asymptote can be written as x equals 0. Well, now here you will also see a couple of other characteristics of our graph. 1 over x. Now, what else do you see? You will find that our function is always in quadrant 3 and quadrant 1. Correct? So, it is in these two quadrants. Second, if we move from left to right, what do you see? The function value is decreasing, correct? It is always decreasing. How about this? Here, it is not defined. But here, it is decreasing. So, in its domain, which does not include 0, the function always decreases. Correct? That's another characteristic of this. You need to make the note of all these characteristics. Correct? Now, another characteristic is even symmetry. Do you see some kind of symmetry here? Let's consider these points. You see this and this are reflected on the origin. So we have a symmetry with respect to a point and this symmetry is the odd symmetry, right? The value of function at 1 is plus 1 but at minus 1 is minus 1. So it's minus of this value, right? So it is odd symmetry. You can check any other function, this point also. You see? At 2, the value of function is half. But at minus 2, it is minus of half. That means odd symmetry. So, the function exhibits odd symmetry. Correct? So, these are few basic characteristics of our reciprocal function. Okay? You need to write them out. I will make kind of summary for you. 1. Let's go back and see. Critical points to consider. Why are these critical points? They help us to draw graph easily. Connect them. And they also help in transformation of a function. So when you have to do transformation of function, moving it left, right, stretching vertically, horizontally, and compressing the graph, all those things, these are the points you have to consider. In reciprocal function, the most important point, I should say a line in this case, is horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Whenever there is a translation, first thing you should do is draw those dotted lines. How do they get translate, right? And then the graph revolves along those lines, the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. In all the parent functions which you are going to study, this is the only parent function which has two asymptotes. Can you tell me another parent function which has one asymptote? Can you tell me? It has a horizontal asymptote. That is exponential function. Right? So, 2 to the power x, for example, it is like this. If x is very, very large negative value, you approach 0. So, that's the only function which you have which has a horizontal asymptote. Correct? And this is also a function which has some restriction on its domain. Most of your functions don't have restriction in their domain. Except for few like square root function square root function is most restricted because it is only in quadrant one right other functions absolute function square root function uh, and uh, exponential function in those cases domain is all real numbers now to compare this function we have found another very interesting case let's compare fx with a line. So now we'll say compare function fx equals to 1 over x with gx equals to x. Now tell me what are the similarities and differences between these two functions the reciprocal function 1 over x and the line. Line let me just draw a straight line here to mess it up a bit I'm not drawing a dark line, but y equals to x could be this line like this. Now, the similarities are 
both are in quadrant 3 and 1. Second, both are odd. This odd degree symmetry. Do you see that odd degree symmetry? Yes. Well, the differences are that line goes through origin, but not this. Origin is not part of domain for reciprocal function. And another very important difference is line is always increasing. Do you see that? It is always increasing. How about our reciprocal function? It is always decreasing. That's a huge difference between the two. And I think a very important one which you should emphasize when you write about differences and similarities of these two functions. Okay? Origin is not in the domain of our reciprocal function, but it is in the domain of our line. I hope you understand both these concepts. One, how to see the function reciprocal, what are its critical points and the characteristics. Second, how is it different from other functions? Here we compare it to y equals to x or gx equals to x to a line. You can compare this function with any other function and always remember reciprocal function is the only function which has both asymptotes, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. The other functions don't have. Line doesn't have any asymptote, correct? But this function, reciprocal, 1 over x, has horizontal asymptote and vertical asymptote. What is the equation of vertical asymptote? x equals to 0, vertical line, the y-axis. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0, x-axis, the horizontal line. Okay? Thank you. I hope you understand it very well. Thanks.